producers, directors, writers and performers. Making films, production has always been a, perceived as a glamorous pursuit. Alternatively, our personal understanding and appreciation of film is shaped by experiences at the cinema. The exhibition of film is a com commonplace shared culturally ac cultural activity highly visible in every city and town in Britain, constantly feeding the popular memory. By contrast, distribution, the third part of film supply, supply chain, is often referred to as the invisible art, a process known only to those within the industry, barely written about and almost imperceptible to everyone else. Yet arguably, distribution is the most important part of the film industry where completed films are brought to life and connected with an audience. So what is involved in this invisible process? <coughs> distribution is about releasing and sustaining films in the marketplace. In the practice of Hollywood and other forms of industrial cinema, the phases of production, distribution and exhibition operate most effectively when vertically integrated, where the three stages are seen as part of the same larger process under the control of one company. In the UK, distribution is very much focused on marketing and sustaining the global product products in local markets. In the independent film sector, vertical integration does not operate so commonly. Producers tend not to have long-term economic links with distributors who likewise have no formal connections with exhibi exhibitors. Here as a pig in the middle, distribution is necessarily a collaborative process requiring the materials and rights of the producer and the cooperation of the exhibitor to promote and show the film in the best way possible. In this sector, distribution can be divided into three stages, licensing, marketing and logistics. Towards the end of 2005, UK distribution and exhibition sectors were starting to move towards digital distribution and exhibition. For exhibitors, digital production, especially when married to the increasing use of digital formats in production, can now re replicate, if not surpass, the image quality of conventional 35mm cinema presentation and, of course, digital sound systems have been used in cinemas for some time. The key elements of prints and advertising P &A, that a distributor must consider are the quantity and production of released prints and trailers. Special films will often, specialised films will often be released with fewer than 10 prints into key independent films. These prints subsequently toured over a six month period to all parts of the UK. On the other hand, commercial mainstream films will often open on over 200 prints, simultaneously screening in all major UK towns and cities. For the majority of releases, favourable press response is a key factor in developing the profile and desirability of a film. Distributors consider both the quality and depth of coverage, and this is often inscribed into the nature and skill of a press campaign. The cinema poster. In the UK, this means the standard 30-inch and 40-inch quad format is still the cornerstone of the theatrical release campaigns. Numerous recent examples indicate that the poster design is highly effective in packaging the key attributes of a film for potential audiences. Distributors will also consider the other poster campaigns ranging from underground advertising to billboards. Advertising in magazines. National and local newspapers works in tandem with press editorial coverage to raise awareness of a release. Press advertising campaign for specialised films will judiciously select publications and spaces close to relevant editorial. For mainstream films, scale and high visibility is the key. The cost of advertising in the UK is comparatively high and is seen as marketing distribution in the UK a riskier business than in most other countries. In order to extend the reach of advertising and development, more effective communication with audiences at low cost, distributors are looking increasingly to viral marketing. Different forms of electronic word of mouth via the internet, email and mobile phones. Many independent distributors in particular do not have press departments and will consequently hire a press agency to run a pre-release campaign. This is especially the case if the distributor brings over a key element for press interviews to support the release. The use of talent, usually the director and or lead actors, wins significant editorial coverage to support a release. The volume of coverage can far outweigh the cost of talent visits. A distributor will consider the use of 
advance public screenings to create word of mouth and advance buzz around a film. Exhibition is a retail branch of the film industry. It involves not the production or the distribution of motion pictures, but their public screening, usually for paying customers in a site devoted to such screenings. The movie theatre, what the exhibitor sells, is the experience of a film, and frequently concessions like soft drinks and popcorn, because exhibitors, to some extent, control how films are programmed, promoted, and presented to the public. They have considerable influence over the box office success, and more importantly, the reception of films. Though films have always been shown in non-theatrical as well as theatrical venues, the business of film exhibition primarily entails the ownership, management and operation of theatres. Historically, film exhibitors have been faced with a new number of situations common to the other sectors of the commercial entertainment industry, shifting market conditions, strong competition and efforts to achieve monopolisation of the field. Government regulatory actions and constant investigation in new technologies. For a better insight into the promotion of a film, I went to do some research at Keswick Film Festival in Cumbria. The theme of the festival was the human sense and had a variety of films which focus on one of these senses. The films were showcased one after another in three different rooms within the theatre location. Depending on which film you wanted to watch determine how much time you would have in between each film. When I arrived at the theatre, the first set of films had already started and therefore I waited two hours before an available screening. The film festival is set in a very scenic pace but out of reach and lacking diversity. The audience mainly consisted of middle-aged people barring a small group of university students who had come up. There weren't many f families or young children. The atmosphere almost lent towards becoming <coughs> an old people home day trip. The venue itself, although set in a very beautiful place, was lacking space to meet and greet and the food and catering was minimum. So in between films you had to wait and you had to find enough time to venture back into town centre to get some decent food. Moving on to the films themselves, the festival did try to have a mixture of films which attempted to appeal to all audiences. The first screening which I went to was The Scent of a Woman, a film from 1992 starring Al Pacino, a film centred around blind man and his carer. This remake of an Italian film was showcased in the main house. My personal response to that was that it felt like a filler option. The film went on for too, far too long and slowed down the pace of the day. With a short break in between, the next film to be screened was also in the main house and was a documentary called Junction for Having Fun. Based in India, the film showed how a visiting doctor's chance game of football with the village girls seemed to lead leads to the Akanjoti Football Academy, which breaks the cycle of poverty and builds on the girls' enthusiasm for f football, allowing them to complete their schooling and to train to become much-needed future employees of the rapidly expanding eye hospital. This film had a lot of potential, it was an in interesting concept but poorly scripted and edited together. However, it was one of the <coughs> only films which I went to watch which had an had a question and answer section at the end of it which felt more like a film festival. The final film was a Polish film called The Suicide Room, showcased in the studio room. The film is centred on a teenager named Dominic and the events that unfold which make him isolate himself and get drawn into an online world called The Suicide Room where he finds he fits in with the crowd. This film was totally relatable with the antagonist closer to my age and from an emo culture which we are more familiar with and I think it would have given the older generation an insight into what a teenage and the more modern world consists of. Overall I found that going to this film festival blew all my expectations out of the window of what a film festival would be like. Barring the passes and the occasional ticket, the festival didn't feel very professional. I expected people to be in suits or smartly dressed, this felt more like a casual affair. The rooms in which the films were showcased were awkward and uncomfortable for film viewing. Everyone felt really cramped as the seats were so close together. This would be something I would keep in mind when making preparations for my degree showcase. On the upside, it has given me quite more confidence in getting my film screen at a film festival as it was a great platform for new filmmakers to get a varied audience to view their film and get feedback on it.